Hey guys, welcome back to mensuration topic where we calculate surface area of 3D solids and other basically which represent containers, boxes, they might be open and closed. Actually, I clarify the meaning for 3D solids in the previous video and that was recap for foundation level GCC how to calculate the total surface area in case of cubes, cuboids, whether it's open or closed, like open box or open container, or just container with all full faces, which has, actually has six faces in total. Okay, and I show you some tricks there, but that was foundation level, we're going back, and now that's for higher mass and IGCC extended, we'll consider different prisons, pyramids, and also a bit tricky, a bit more tricky, I would say, problems for a cuboid, all right? If you're ready, let's get started. For those who are still struggling with foundation level, please go to the link in the description below. You'll find that previous video there. So other guys who are ready to struggle and make a challenge there, please grab your notes, grab your pens, and we start. All right, so what we have, we need to find the height of the cuboid below. If its surface area is 240 centimeters squared, we're given length 12 and 6 as width, and you need to give your final answer to two decimal place in centimeters squared, in centimeters, sorry. You mark height in centimeters. All right, so that what we're going to do right now in a moment. So first of all, I want to ask you, hi guys, about area of that cuboid, the total area. We understand that in total area is 240 centimeters squared and it consists of the sum of all three faces multiplied by two. So basically areas of all three faces. Let's say this is phase number one, this is phase number two, the lateral one here, and this is frontal one that's front of the cuboid is phase number three. So that's why the total area represents A1, area of phase one, A2, and A3, multiplied by two, because every single phase has the couple, you remember that. Okay, so what we have right now, we need to discover what stays for each area here. And let's start from the phase number one, which is the top one. It's actually equivalent to the area of the bottom phase, which is 12 by six. So that's why it's going to be 12 by six centimeters, okay? Next one, area two. If you want, you can calculate, and it's going to be 72 in total. So next, phase number two. Right now, I'm going to show you that. This is the phase number two, and the area is going to be six by height. So that's why I will input H that unknown stays for height, and I recommend to do so because H is more meaningful, meaning that it's simply height, okay? If you input X, that's okay, but you know, in more complicated questions and problems, better to use meaningful variable names. So many like programmers in computer science, uh, they used meaningful names for the variable when they're writing the codes because can you imagine tons of variables there, all right? So we need to keep track of every single variable and understand at the moment what it means. You just need to be aware of. And if you mark like X, Y, Z, it will be the mess definitely. Tons of codes. Okay, can you imagine? So that's why I use meaningful names for a variable. That's recommendation. So for phase number two, we'll get six by age simply, and we add that. So next one, phase number three, which is frontal one. It's right there. And parameters, 12 by age, the height. So we just add 12 age. We everything multiplying by two, and that will result in 240 centimeters squared. So we complete an equation, and this is 
an equation that we need to solve. Because the variable h is right there, and this is repeating variable, we just simply need to combine variables. But before, I would like to simplify it a little bit. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to divide every, so every single part, left-hand side and right-hand side by 2, because we don't need to here. And that means we'll get 120 equal to 12 by 6 is going to be 72. And 6h and 12h, similar terms, in total we'll get 8 and h. So now we see that it will leave 8 and h on the right side and 72 transferred to the left-hand side. We'll get the following, 120 minus 72. That's the result that we'll get. It's going to be 48 will be equal to 8 in h. So to find h, we simply need to write as the fraction 48 over 18. So if we calculate that, let me divide by 18. So I'll get 2.66, so many sixes. So I can say that it's going to be 66 six, at least to three decimal places. Uh, but it didn't round, so because 6 goes on and on there um, so what I'm what I can do so six is a recurrent I can round up to two decimal place as I ask here so I just cut out and say that finally h in centimeters is going to be 2.67 centimeters and this is the answer so make sure you have the same one and we'll go to the next problem so here we want to consider a prism so, what prisms are? Basically, they are objects that represent, so the random prism with, let's say, some bases represent the top part and the same identical, the bottom part. So, you can say that, identical. Connected with, um, you know, lateral surfaces. So the top and the bottom, they are the same. That's what general prism might represent. In this case, we have the basis as a triangle. It's right there. The same triangle lay behind, so it's there. Identical triangle with sizes 10 and 12, two legs. So both triangles are identical to each other and they are right angle. So in this case, I may say the top one of that prism is going to be a triangle instead of that like random surface, surface uh, not the surface, but actually the random shape that I found. But that's what typically prism represents. And we used to call triangular prism because the base represented by a triangle. If it's square based prism, so it's going to be square. If it's rectangular base prism, it's going to be a rectangle in the bottom parts. So a cylinder, actually, this is the prior case because for, for the prism because it has the circle. All right. But right now we have that. And what we're going to do, we just simply want to find the total surface area of the prism. Okay, so as normally I'll do the same. I mark the first frontal face here, the same we have behind. So we have also the top face. I mark the top face as two. And we have, so I'm only marking the unique face. Uh, and face number one has the couple on the other side. So, but right now I'm just going to recap only uh, unique faces without pairing them and then later on I double if the face has the pair and double the area in this case and if it's unique I just simply leave it alone okay so that's my approach so face number two is right there and face number three is from that side from lateral side and from the bottom we also have another face which is face number four okay so it's done. So first of all, I want to write the total surface area as the following. A 
is going to be area one, which is going to be double because one face number one has the pair behind, has the couple. Let's go to, we need to add area two. That's also unique, so that's unique. We need to add A3 from lateral side, and we need to add the bottom part, so face number four is the bottom part. So we need to add face number four, and area for the face number four. That's the formula. That's the formula that we are going to use. I don't memorize it, just go by, just by sense, you understand? So just adding what I see, I just need, I need to cover all faces in full in order to find the total surface area. All right, so face number one, A1, let's consider that. It's represented by a triangle with sides 10 and 12. So how to calculate area one, which is simply a triangle? We need to simply do the following. 10 by 12, two legs multiply and one over two. That's the formula for the area of triangle. I hope you understand that. If not, just simply a triangle is half of rectangle. So that's why we use that. Okay, so that's area one. And if we simplify that, we'll get two cancel with 12. Six, six by 10 is 60 centimeters squared. Okay, centimeters squared. So next part, centimeters squared. So area, Two is going to be area of that block. Okay, so in this case, we don't know that size. So I mark that size here, for example, and we don't know that. We don't know that. So that's why let's set up as x for a while, and x by 8 is going to be. 8x, this, the area of face number 2. So we need to find x right now. So that side x is going to be the same side here. And the triangle, if we mark K, L, and the point M, so in that triangle, basically representing face number 1, we have hypotenuse L, M as x. So what typically is going on here? We just simply have this small triangle with sizes 12 and 10 here and just a known side x that we're looking for. How to find x? Use Pythagoras. So using Pythagoras, we can write that x squared or just simply x is squared of square of two legs added up. Okay, that's ready to go with formula. So from where we can figure out x immediately. So let's calculate using calculator. So it's 100 plus 144 and the result to two decimal place is going to be 15.62 centimeters. All right, so we found x here. So that's why if we multiply by 8, so everything multiplied by 8, we'll get 124. 124.96 centimeters squared. That's how we calculate that. Okay, so we know that. And let's calculate area 3. So area 3 is that side LK, so 10 centimeters by 8. So that's, this is 8 and this is 10. So 8 centimeters. So 8 by 10. So better to write instead of, for not to be confusing. So it's going to be 80 centimeters squared. And A4, which is the bottom part, is 12 by 8. So A4 is simply 12 by 8, 12 times 8, which is 8, so 96 centimeters. 
squared. All right, so we've got all the items in our formula here, A1, A2, A3, and A4, and we need just to plug that. So A1 is here, A2 is here, A3 is there, and A4 is 96, so let's just write the answer. So area is going to be 2 by A1 is 2 by 60. Next, we add A2. 124.96 then on top of that we add a3 is going to be 80 centimeters squared and the last 96 okay that's the total area right now so final answer if we calculate it just please use your calculator so 120 plus 124.96 plus 80 and plus 96. What I've got, I've got 420.96 centimeters squared. And that is the final result for this problem, okay? That's how to calculate triangular prisms, okay? So basically, it's well done. We completed for prisms and for the cuboids. That was nice explained, I think, pretty in full. So hope you like that. And the next video will go through pyramids. So thank you. And please watch the next video up to the end.